They're not just for artists anymore. It's time you got yourself a sketchbook. I've shared before that I studied creative writing, and that's because it's always something that I liked doing and that I think I do best. And I had a great time writing and revising and workshopping all through my creative writing program. But then I went on to get a PhD, and even though there was still a lot of writing, it was a totally different thing. Page counts were higher, deadlines were tighter, and the subject matter was far and away drier. In that half-decade pressure cooker, it seemed like quantity often mattered more than quality, at least in terms of things that I really cared about, like word choice and sentence structure. As I got deeper into that program, I started writing less and less of the stuff that I wanted to, because I had to write more and more of the things that I had to. More distressingly, though, I noticed that I wasn't getting ideas for poems or creative essays anymore, and by the time I was done, I was worried that I had maybe inadvertently suffocated my inner poet. Now, this story does have a happy ending, which we'll get to in just a second, but I share it because I think my experience is something that a lot of writers in various stages go through. Either you don't write as much as you'd like to, or you can't even think of anything to write at all. So you don't, and then you sit around wondering what's going on. But there's a pretty easy way to get yourself back on track, and I know that because it's something that I've been doing for the last several weeks. All you need is a good sketchbook and a pinch of consistency, and before you know it, you'll be building a healthier writing practice, either for the first time or all over again. When I was in college, I went to a random presentation by some illustrator who said that every artist should keep a sketchbook. He then went on to explain that it's important for artists to have a place where they create things that they never intend to sell or display. And he said that a sketchbook is that place, a place to practice the act of creation, to test out new ideas, to practice skills, and do it all without the pressure of an audience. It's something that I filed away in my brain, but didn't really do much with, because after all, I'm not an artist, so I didn't see a direct application for my own work. Anyway, years later, I remembered that lecture and decided to take my first attempt at keeping a writing sketchbook. I was knee-deep in PhD school, struggling to find time to write and feeling bad about the whole thing. So I got a notebook and decided that each day I would write a little poetry fragment in it. My goal wasn't to write poems, just to practice finding something poetic in each day and then writing it down, maybe to turn it into a poem later. And it worked for a few months. I still have that mostly empty notebook, but of course then grad school took over and the practice fell by the wayside. Skip ahead to now, though, and I picked up the sketchbook practice once again. The first rule of a writing sketchbook is that, well, there are no rules. You need to find what works for you. For me, that meant finding a pocket-sized notebook and carrying it around with me throughout the day to record any passing writing-related thoughts that I had. Sometimes I didn't have my notebook handy, so I took down a note digitally and then transferred it to my notebook later. Again, it doesn't matter what you use or how you do it. Personally, I like the way that writing in the notebook feels in contrast to just typing more things into a phone, so the separation of medium really works for me. In practice, my sketchbook notes often coincided with walks that I'd take around campus, because you can only sit and grade papers for so long at a time. And I'd just keep my ears and eyes open while I walked, practicing the simple art of poetic observation. Sometimes I'd write down an image, something that caught my attention that I wanted to write about later. Maybe it was a word or an interesting phrase that could find its way into a poem someday. And at other times, I would write down an idea for a research project or other kind of paper. My notebook wasn't just for poetry. As long as it was writing related, it fit into the sketchbook. So you can do the same. You can treat your sketchbook as a place to gather ideas, a place to try out different sentences or word combinations, or even just a place to ramble. Remember, what goes into your sketchbook is a sketch. It's like a doodle that's valuable because it's practice not because it's publishable. Here in just a second, we'll talk about some of the more specific benefits that came from my sketchbook practice. But long story short, the most significant benefit is that it actually worked to revitalize my writing. After a few years in the grad school doldrums, the simple practice of keeping a sketchbook helped me to shift my mind back into writing mode, and I've even started to write some new drafts. So, can a sketchbook help you to get back into writing? Yes, definitely. But it's not just a tool for helping you to write more frequently or at all. There are other benefits that I've observed, both in my own sketchbook practice and in students as they've worked on similar sketchbook-inspired assignments, and that's what I'd like to talk about next. I've already mentioned it a little, but the next most significant benefit that I've seen come from my sketchbook is that it helped me to collect ideas for writing. It's common for people to wonder where writers get their ideas, and while the exact answer might be different from one writer to the next, 
keeping a sketchbook can help you to answer that question for yourself. Before I started, I went a good long while feeling uninspired and really only writing the things that I absolutely had to for school. But just by keeping my notebook handy, I began to find new ideas, at least one a day, sometimes even more. Because I already had a lot of experience writing, I already had a pretty good idea of where I went for inspiration, that is, just by paying attention to the world around me. So I used that as a purpose for my sketchbook, that is, to record the things that caught my attention. Things like a sign on the side of the road that said, Managed Fire, Do Not Report. Things like dead seeds hanging from trees and rattling in the breeze, or even a bird's nest made of twigs and long strips of clear plastic. All of these little unusual things caught my attention and found their way into my sketchbook, and eventually they became the basis for brand new poems. I knew that paying close attention to the world around me was something that would help me to come up with new ideas because that's what's worked for me in the past. So requiring myself to write something down each day put me in the mode of looking for those small things that I might otherwise ignore. But you might get your ideas from somewhere else, and that's totally fine. Again, this is about finding what works for you. You might not even know where you find your inspiration, so just doodle around with anything that catches your interest. And then go back and look for patterns or common threads in the things that you write down. In that way, a sketchbook won't just serve as a safe place to keep your ideas, it will also help you to understand where you go for inspiration and what your creative habits are. That way, when you do feel the creative juices drying up, you'll know where to go for a refresher. So maybe you write down little things that you observe throughout the day, or maybe your notes are more conceptual. For example, I got the idea to work on a project about self-grading in writing classes, and I'm currently working on research to that end now. Or maybe you write fiction, so you might record scraps of conversations that you overhear, or observations that you make about the ways that people relate to each other. In the same way that artists might find themselves mostly drawing landscapes, or figures, or abstract forms in their sketchbooks, and then having those habits translate into their more polished works, you might also find that there are subjects, ideas, or genres that you prefer to work with. And that's great! It's all part of getting to know yourself as an artist. And do you need a sketchbook to do that? Well, no, probably not. But writing smaller things more frequently will help you to recognize those patterns, probably a little more quickly and with less heartache than if you are only relying on larger, more polished works. Believe it or not, writing in a sketchbook is writing, and writing is a skill that gets better with practice, so by keeping a sketchbook, you're giving yourself an opportunity to practice and hone your skills. So for example, in my own sketchbook, I'm not just writing down conceptual notes about things I'd like to write about, like dandelion or bird's nest. Instead, I try to record specific lines or phrases that I might end up using in a piece later. So my note for dandelions doesn't just say, write a poem about dandelions, instead I have the lines fur-petaled fireball and feather mane starburst. These are things that came to mind as I looked at a lawn full of dandelions in various stages of life. And in an earlier entry, I described those trees with the dead seeds as clinging to their paper ghosts hissing in the breeze. Are these lines home runs? I don't know, I don't even care, but that's not the point. The point is that I'm not just using my sketchbook to gather ideas, I'm also using it to practice the skills of poetic diction and writing in lines. It's the same with an artist's sketchbook. They don't just write down the idea, draw a bucket near a shed, they draw it. And it's not meant to be a finalized prize-winning piece, instead it's an opportunity to practice the skill of drawing a particular shape or shadow or texture. And as a result, the artist gains practical experience with their sketchbook that helps them to approach polished works more skillfully. So writing down ideas for stories or poems or essays can be a good thing, but you can get even more out of it by actually practicing the act of writing them. You can even write about the same thing in a couple of different ways. So it's common to see people doodle with pictures in the margins of their notebooks, but what about doodling with words? I think if we did it more, we'd get better at writing because we're actually practicing the skill of writing. And who cares if your doodle is crummy? It's just a doodle. Turn the page and do something better the next day. I also think that one of the more valuable lessons a writer can learn is that their work is always in flux until it's published. A lot of writers get stuck thinking that the first way they wrote something is the only way it can be written, and as a result, they lose sight of what it really means to write and revise. So using your sketchbook as a place for experimentation and variation can help prevent you from allowing your work to fossilize prematurely. In fact, I like to give my students an assignment each semester that asks them to write about the same thing in multiple different ways. It's a low-stakes way of practicing that helps them to understand the value and possibilities of revision more than any lecture I give ever could. 
And remember, it's just a sketchbook, so nobody will ever have to know if you write something goofy or worthless. Well, unless, that is, you get really famous and your sketchbooks end up in the special collections of a library somewhere. But even then, they'll do the important public service of reminding us that writing is the result of good hard work and not just genius. So either way, your sketchbooks will be a benefit to everyone. And the third major benefit of keeping a sketchbook isn't really a direct benefit to your writing, but it kind of is. Either way, it's a benefit to you, and it's that you might just find yourself enjoying writing, or even your day, just a little bit more. See, before I decided to keep a sketchbook, I would spend my daily walks completely lost in thought. Now that I've started keeping a sketchbook, though, I'm not completely lost in thought, just mostly lost. That is, because I wanted to find something to put in my sketchbook each day, I started paying more attention to the weird and wonderful things that surrounded me on my way. And I wouldn't have put these things in my sketchbook if they didn't intrigue me in some way, so instead of just walking around and around like a zombie, I started to become more alive to the moments of pleasure and delight from day to day. Not only that, but I was regaining the satisfaction of writing regularly, something that was important to me, but that life had slowly and quietly separated me from. Now, I don't want to get too far out there, but it was a practice that didn't just support my writing, but also supported the quality of my life. I was more alive to the world around me, more adept at noticing little good things, and more fulfilled in knowing that I was doing something that was important to me. And that might not be a direct benefit to anything I might publish someday, but it is a small and meaningful benefit in the ongoing daily grind. But don't just take my word for it. I mentioned earlier that I give a sketchbook-inspired assignment to my students, and year after year, they come back and say that they've also experienced similar benefits from the practice. Students who came out of high school thinking that they weren't very good writers began to see themselves in a new light. Others who had the enjoyment of writing beaten out of them by the burden of school began to find a renewed pleasure in the craft. And some students even reported that the practice of writing about the same thing in multiple different ways helps them to work through difficult memories and develop a healthier outlook. I don't know exactly what it is, but this kind of writing can be good for you, even beyond being good for your skills as a writer. And I think that's pretty neato. So what are you waiting for? Go get yourself a sketchbook. It will make you a more deliberate writer, a more skillful writer, and even a marginally happier one. Whoever said that sketchbooks are just for artists? Really though, I think it's worth having some kind of regular writing practice, whatever form it takes. Because after all, the only standard for being a writer is writing regularly. And if you have a tool like a sketchbook that helps you to doodle around with words and grow as a literary artist, well, why wouldn't you do it? In fact, I think it's such a good idea that I'm going to let you do it. So go on now, go have some fun with words in the world. Just be sure to come back next week and tell me how it went. 